Forget frequently asked questions. Common sense. Common knowledge. Or Google. How about advice from a real genius? 95% of people in any profession are good enough to be qualified and licensed. 5% go above and beyond. They become very good at what they do. But only 0.1% a real geniuses. Richard Jacobs has made it his life's mission to find them for you. He hunts down and interviews geniuses in every field. Sleep science, cancer, stem cells, ketogenic diets, and more. Here come the geniuses. This is the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Before we begin, a note from our sponsor. I'm Richard Jacobs, Executive Director of the nonprofit Finding Genius Foundation and host of the Finding Genius Podcast. In late 2016, I was rear-ended at 65 miles an hour by a truck on the highway, which sent me off-road into a ditch. The impact of the collision gave me a concussion and other injuries. At the hospital, a CT scan showed that I had thyroid nodules, which turned out to be cancer. It was then, when I had a biopsy in my neck, that I realized, even if I was a millionaire, I wouldn't want a second or a third biopsy due to the pain and the invasiveness of it. And appointments at that time for thyroid experts were three to six months out. And I was worried about dying now, even if that was irrational. So because of this, I've decided to raise money to conduct a literature review on steroids, on the causes of anxiety and depression, a condition that affects well over 50 million people in the United States and hundreds of millions worldwide. Our goal is to create a codex, a guide that reveals all possible treatments for anxiety and depression for people that live with the condition or for loved ones that have it, as my wife and my son do. To find out more about our fundraiser, visit FindingGeniusFoundation.org and click on Current Initiatives. And now, to our guest. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Finding Genius Podcast, now part of the Finding Genius Foundation. I have Sarah James. Uh, she's an author and co-founder of what's called Jacaranda Hill Farm. And we're going to talk about uh, her work there and uh, her experience. So, Sarah, thanks for coming. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for having me. Yeah, if you would, tell me about your, uh, you know, your most current venture. What are you working on or working in right now? Yes. So um, I'm currently, this is a by night time and by weekend job. So um, by day, I work for an engineering consultancy globally. And traditionally, I've done technology consultancy and engineering consultancy. And I grew up with a farming background in the UK. So my parents were in young farmers. I was in young farmers. And about six years ago, we decided as a family that we were going to start a farm and so yeah so our current venture is Jacaranda Hill Farm. We live on about 100 acres about an hour south of Perth Western Australia and what we're doing is running the business um, the way I've been trained to run tech businesses and engineering um, consultancies. So we're doing a lot of partnering a lot of partnerships on the farm. Yeah. We're playing with um, technology which is so much fun especially IoT and automation so it's we moved here a year ago. The house is completely off grid. It's a converted shed. So inside it looks brand new, but, but it is a shed on the outside. And we've just upgraded our off grid battery system um, to lithium ion. And mm. we've currently got about 40 kilowatt of power going through there, which is great. So we're not connected to the grid. We're off grid. So, yeah. So, so what's the, uh, the, what, the what's main. The, what does the farm produce? You know, the, the house is yeah. off the grid, great, but what's the production yeah. of the farm? Yeah, so the, at the moment, the farm, the way we're doing it is um, working with neighbours. So it's very um, collaborative in the way we work. So we don't have any cows on the farm. All our cows are loaned from neighbours, and that is on purpose in order for us to restore the ground and do regenerative agriculture out here. What we have got is we've got about 20 beehives, again, through another partnership. So we're producing all our own honey and also selling it to the campers. So we want, went on a journey about two years ago um, working with what was then called UCAMP, and it's now been bought out by an American company, and it's now called HipCamp. So we very successfully launched HipCamp here at the farm. So we've got seven sites where people can come and come and camp off grid. So they bring everything with them that they need um, and they've, they're nowhere near each other. So they can't see each other and they're in the bush. So they're with trees and it's, it is beautiful. We're very, very lucky here. Um, mm. So that is our main venture. So we might be called Jacaranda Hill Farm, but we, it's about diversity and diversification. So my head, if you put all your eggs, for example, which we do do eggs here as well, <laughs> in one, one basket, then 
if things happen or change, then you aren't able to pivot. So we've done bees, cows with the neighbours. They've got about 100 that we rotate through. Eggs, we've got 20 or so chickens at the moment, all producing eggs, even though it's um, really, really cold in midwinter. So uh, cold here outside is 10, I should say, but chickens don't like 10 degrees. And then we've also got silver perch in the dam, and we are looking at doing what they call glamping, So these are tents which can withstand cyclones and things like that that come through and very, very popular. So we're looking at doing two of those and we've been discussing planning permission with them. So we have to do it the right way, which is good. So, yeah, very similar to here, Uluru, which is the big rock in the centre of Australia, have got a few and also somewhere called Rottnest Island has a few as well. And it's all about that. All right. So you said that you're, are you trying to restore the land or you're trying to just use it in a diverse way? Or I'm not sure I understand. The reason we did it is because we recognize that a lot of kids and a lot of families don't have access to land out here to camp on. We have parks, so run by the government. However, you can't take your whole family. So you can't take your dog with you. And they, you often have to travel quite away from Perth in order to find somewhere to camp. So And also when you do camp, they're often very close together. So we had a trip when I was pregnant seven years ago to the Prongrups and we camped and it was grand final weekend for the Australian rules football out here. And the campsite was packed and you couldn't get out, out. You walked out the tent and there was somebody else there. And we both, Robert and my husband and I both thought this, this isn't right. This isn't, isn't how it should be when people want to get away. So right. that's why we brought camping, off-grid camping to the farm. And we've won awards for what we've done, which is pretty special from Hip Camp. And the other thing we did a first for was um, pay-as-you-go insurance. So when somebody books the camping, they a percentage of that booking is insurance. So Hip Camp did that for us because the indemnity insurance for the farm to do this would be so high, it, it wasn't financially viable. And we're very, very lucky, very lucky to have a council here in in the Peel region, which has been supportive of this and absolutely love what we've been doing. So there, there is plans to get a, f- a few of our own cows. I'd love to be able to do my own butter and my own milk and a few goats and a few ducks so that children and families who live in the city, they can go out an hour from, from the Perth on the weekend and experience what it's like to be in the country. I think it's very important for especially children to reconnect with the environment to which they live and to be able to touch a chicken, to see where an right. egg comes from exactly. and to see, yeah. the, see what it's like when it comes out, that it's warm. And, and then <laughs> ask the question, is there a baby chicken in there? Um, and to see that as well. So we hatch eggs here as well. And just I think it, it sparks that genius in children. So it it creates that when you see a child in the outdoors asking questions or thinking about what's going on, it leads to more questions. And I think it's it's to be it's good for children to be in that environment, especially if they're not on a day to day basis. And it asks as well. Yeah. And it's almost for me, it's the balance between technology because I work in it on a daily basis and the outdoors. So it creates a balance for me. Otherwise it can be too, it can become too many numbers and digits and it's quite a nice You've turned it into a a place so people can camp and experience nature. And it sounds like also a, uh, maybe kind of an outdoor school in a way. Is that accurate? Well, yeah, we, it's, that's kind of happened by accident. So because people want to know about off grid, they want to know, well, a reed, what is a reed bed system? So our water gets filtered through the reed bed system here and then goes out onto the land. People ask questions. So you end up, so the amount of people I've never met before that have gone, can we see your battery room, which happens to be through my bathroom <laughs> and out the other side it is unbelievable. So you do end up teaching, but it's teaching in a practical way. Um, which I think goes in better. Well, for me, it does. I know that. And and we also get, you get like-minded people who care about the environment come out. And the amount of people we've met is unbelievable. And it's lovely. And the other thing I find is, so certain times of year, we're allowed campfires. During bush, bushfire season out here, we're not, um, which makes complete sense. 
but to get round a campfire and chat, have a hot chocolate or a glass of wine, whatever you, you do, it's good for the soul. It takes you back to uh, basics. And we find a lot of, of people who come out here go away regenerated. Before we continue, I've been personally funding the Finding Genius podcast for four and a half years now, which has led to 2,700 plus interviews of clinicians, researchers, scientists, CEOs, and other amazing people who are working to advance science and improve our lives and our world. Even though this podcast gets 100,000 plus downloads a month, we need your help to reach hundreds of thousands more worldwide. Please visit FindingGeniusPodcast.com and click on Support Us. We have three levels of membership from 10 to $49 a month, including perks such as the ability to see ahead in our interview calendar and ask questions of upcoming guests, transcripts of podcasts you're interested in, the ability to request specific topics or guests, and more. Visit FindingGeniusPodcast.com and click Support Us today. Now back to the show. They go away and mm. feel like they've, they're connected with their soul. And I, I don't know why. I can't quite describe it. But uh, when I'm well, here, nature, I, I feel nature grounded. Nature does feel like that. Yeah, nature feels like that. It yeah. does. Nature. It does. It is hard sometimes running the farm as well as working in the city. So I travel into the city um, a few days a week. Um, and my job is amazing. They let me work flexibly from home. Always have done. But the convergence between technology and the farm here and giving people access to both to see what we're doing with tech. So we've also got we've got dams here on the property. So we feed water from the bottom dam across to the property so that we can so we can irrigate different crops around the house. So we're playing with veggie garden and eventually we'd like to offer our campers as well as um, honey and eggs. I like to offer them a garden as well. So a veggie garden that they can come and choose what they want and cook with the produce that's from here as well. So slowly but surely we'll get there with that. So that's all automated on a system. And we use if then if this, then that to make sure that at certain times of the day it comes through, which is great. Um, we've also done um, soap as well, which is really popular. So another local farmer just down the road, she's 10 minutes down the road from me. She also does hit camp as well. So we work as a network to, if we're full, we'll send people to her. And if she's full, she'll send people to us. She, she also runs a soap company from her property. So what we do is send her our honey and then she sends us back soap made with the honey. So then on the farm as well, we offer that to our guests as well. We're very lucky. Because you make soap out of the honey? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a honey soap. It's really, really good for your skin. Um, and it's all naturally. So we don't use pesticides or anything here on our farm. Um, one of our neighbors, he's a biodynamic farmer. And he has therefore not been spraying for, I think, over 50 years or so on their property. So we are, he's been amazing. That That's the morels who live nearby. They third generation farmers on their land, but they've been a source of wisdom for us and a help and that guidance because my family don't live here. So it, it's nice to have somebody who's a bit older, a bit wiser and has done this for years nearby, which has been a great help. Um, so the, the goal of the farm is to, is to what teach, you know, using actual real experiences out in the field. And is it also to monetize yes. the farm or like what else is the, the point of the no. farm? No, the, we, when we bought it, we said we would never, we didn't want to make, both of us aren't money, money driven. We never have been. I did work for one of the big four companies and it just didn't sit right with me. So what we've said is as long as we break even, as long as we've got enough money to survive here, we're happy. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've kept, I think it's $20 a night to camp. We've kept the the amount of money low on purpose yeah. so it's accessible to all. so it, it's not about how much money can we make here it's about making people aware educating people you're quite right of the outdoors and how it can make a difference to your life and I think I think it, it does make it makes a huge difference and you can you can see it when people come <laughs> what they're like when they go is very different to when they arrive some of them that's for sure oh, what do you so, mean what's an example what do you mean so often people can rock up on a friday evening and they are stressed worried concerned excited though you could hear that and then they go and there's a sense you can just 
feel it that there's a sense of relaxation a sense of calm in people that we, we've seen and, and it's so funny when we've had a lot of people come who they start off at the the camp we, we're on a hill and it runs all the way up to the top of the escarpment here if you like this podcast please click the link in the description to subscribe and review us on itunes and people start off thinking they want to stay on the 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 flat area and then people explore and wonder about the property then get to the top and they're like oh wow these views are amazing so you can see the ocean from the top of our escarpment and so we're on the darling ranges as well and yeah you just you just see they look lighter in in their in who they are and yeah you can really see a difference um one of the things we've done here on the farm as well there's there's in western australia um, and it's gone Australia now. There's uh, something called the Blue Farm, um, Blue Tree Project. And the Blue Tree Project is about when trees die and out here they look, they look very barren and they've got no, there's just the trunk left and some of the, some of the big branches. And a lady invented an idea where it, if somebody has been affected by suicide, um, or is aware of that um, to paint a tree blue. So we have a blue tree on our farm with a blue bench underneath it. Um, and it's a beautiful place to sit and look out. So, th th so, and we did that because I have been affected by a friend that did, um, and a few others that we know as well. Mm. So it, it's um, a place of reflection. And every year we do a on our Are You OK Day um, around there. It's normally on a weekend. People come to the farm. And again, it's we just have friends, family and other people who want to come. And we do a sausage sizzle. That's the thing over here where you just everybody has a, a sausage in a bun and you have a bit of a yarn, so to speak. Um, and that's what we do. That's what it's about. So okay. it, it's our way of giving back to society. That's what we do. Yeah, that's excellent. What um, we just have a few more minutes. What are some of the future plans yeah. of your farm for the next year or two? Oh, so the two glamping tents, we both want to do that. We also we've got a lot of weeds up the top paddock. I want to get rid of them. That that's never ending when you live on a farm. I want to play with more tech. We're going to upgrade the drones that we've got here. I've give, my husband has to prove <laughs> prove that we can that we can justify the spend before buying gadgets here. Um, and I definitely want to get a few cows, probably Dexter's because they, they're less intensive on the, on the ground. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll look at more animals. That's for sure. And grow that way. I think also irrigation, we want to connect up the top water tank to our bottom water tank. And I'm, I'm trying to convince my husband that I want to do an extension on the house as well. So another bathroom would be really nice because I've got the girls will be teenagers one day and I <laughs> that would be fun. So, yeah, there's lots of plans here. And I think the use of new technology, that's that's what I want to play with as well. So as new things come, I definitely want to play with that. Do you so, get people that ask you uh, how you did it and, you know, are you doing any speaking engagements on how you did what you did? Yes, I spoke to Amazon. Um, they interviewed me on she builds because i've applied my technology experience into the farm basically so mm. they i'll sh share with you the link it was great great fun ch chatting to lillian um lillian dean uh, on that and that was uh, two weeks ago i think mm. on their twitch platform so it, it's yeah there's been quite a few and then a local school asked me to go and speak to which i did it was amazing. And then I'm speaking at a change management uh, event on Thursday next week. And this is where people have read my book and have enjoyed it so much. They want to hear more. So it's very humbling, very humbling. So Yeah, no, that's hmm. excellent. Very good. Well, excellent. What's the best way for people that, you know, can't get to the farm to find out more about it and, uh, you know, maybe in the future to plan a trip or something? Yeah, so we're on Facebook, so Jacaranda Hill Farm on Facebook. My husband, Robert, he does all the social media stuff. So you're not – well, you might be talking to me if he's sleeping and I'm awake. So he Instagram, we're on there as well. Twitter, we're on there. And then 
There's also Google. There's loads of pictures of the farm that people have taken. Um, so you can go and have a look on that. Um, and you can book through HipCamp. That's the best place to book. The, um, we had somebody, you asked me the question about what people were like when they arrived. One, one family, they, they arrived. They'd been waiting for our borders in Western Australia to open because we were on their bucket list. And my husband and I, when they said that to us, we both wanted to cry. We were like, wow, thank really cool. you. It's so yeah. humbling. So, yeah, we're very lucky and the people we get to meet here are very nice people. Excellent. Well, very good. Well, you know, thank you for coming on the podcast. And it's uh, it's cool that you're innovating in this space where, you know, it seems like it's either a big farm or, or nothing. And you're actually succeeding where a lot of people are failing. So that's excellent. Yeah, I think there are people around the world that are doing this and they're doing it more and more. And I, uh, I just think big farming is not the way to go anymore. It's not sustainable. And using pesticides and herbicides and glycophosphates and all that not good stuff it, it's not good for our health <laughs> it's proven so we need to do something different and if supply chains are disrupted we have to be able to survive so i know we could survive here excellent all right well sarah thank you very much for coming on the podcast i appreciate it thank you Richard. thank you very much for having me if you like this podcast please click the link in the description to subscribe and review us on itunes You've been listening to the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. If you like what you hear, be sure to review and subscribe to the Finding Genius Podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And want to be smarter than everybody else? Become a premium member at FindingGeniusPodcast.com. This podcast is for information only. No advice of any kind is being given. Any action you take or don't take as a result of listening is your sole responsibility. Consult professionals when advice is needed.